This is a short series on how we bikepacked the Natchez Trace Parkway, where we camped, got water, got food, and what we experienced along the way. So come along on our bikepacking adventure so you can start planning yours today. We began our amazing trip by being dropped off at the Loveless Cafe, where we ate breakfast. By the way, the biscuits are super good. Right after breakfast, we started pedaling, and by this time, it was about 10 a.m., and we were off. It was super hot. <laughs> after about a mile or so, we arrived at the Natchez Trace Parkway main entrance sign, which means picture time. Right about now is when realization started sinking in with me. Those uphills I don't like. <laughs> Hey, look, only 439 more miles to go. Sometimes you have to laugh to keep from crying. These hills were no joke. Finally! Woo! <laughs> Yay! But I sure did love going down them. The Natchez Trace Parkway consists of 444 miles of pure history. Our first stop was at mile marker 407, the Gordon House. Here we got water and went to the restroom. There are only two houses left standing on the trace and the Gordon House is one of them. It was built in 1818 and considered a very elegant home, but it was also a trading post. John Gordon was not only a postmaster, trader, farmer, and entrepreneur, but he was also the captain of spies for Andrew Jackson during the Creek War. He is considered Andrew Jackson's most faithful spy. So it's 5.15 in the afternoon. It's finally cooled off. Thank goodness. I was so happy to arrive at mile marker 385 because this is where we were camping. Now let me go ahead and warn you. From where you turn off the trace and where you're actually going to pitch your tent, it's a mile and a half. While Rodney pitched the tent, I cooked us some dinner, and then we went and washed off and went straight to sleep. I just wanted to show you a lot of the stops that there were along the way on the first day. I didn't get a lot of video or pictures because I was nervous. It was super hot, late start, I'm a slow rider, I mean, just whoo, you name it. I was scared, like I've never been without a car before in my life. So knowing that, hey, you're getting dropped off and you have over 450 miles to ride is a little scary, for me at least. But here's where we made it, the Meriwether Lewis on the first day. 63 miles. Uh, day two, I woke up. I had survived the night. But listen to the birds chirping and what I had to say about how I felt when I woke up this morning. I feel refreshed this morning and I, I don't feel bad. Hey, baby. Awesome people at this Meriwether Lewis campground. I can't wear it all. <laughs> Thank you. I was so excited to get started that day because we were going to the Meriwether Lewis gravesite. <laughs> That's it down there, but let's see what this is. This cabin is a replica of cabins built back in 1809. You see, Meriwether Lewis checked into a cabin just like this in 1809, known as Grinder Stand, which was an inn. He was on his way to Washington, D.C. to explain um, his government spending and to publish his journals. You know, the Lewis and Clark expedition. Isn't that cool, though, how they used to build houses back in the day? This is where Meriwether Lewis met his demise on October 11th, 1809. Some say it was suicide. 
Others say it was murder. But come on now. Two gunshot wounds? One to the head and one in his chest? In 1848, the state of Tennessee erected this monument over his grave site. The broken column represents his short lifespan. Now that the history lesson's over, we had to get back on the trace and start writing. At mile marker 363, you'll come across Sweetwater Branch. And it's a nice little walk along a stream, probably about 20 minutes or so. But it is so refreshing. How pretty, huh? Hold my sunglasses. Huh? Dude, that was a big water. Again, remember, we're riding and it's like 92 degrees outside. This water was amazing. I can't get nobody to steal them damn bikes. <laughs> Sign on there. Please, if I can Uber home. At around mile marker 355, you're going to come to Collinwood. Make sure to stop at the Wayne County Welcome Center. They'll even let you take showers there. Um, and they have a great little Mexican restaurant down the street. But we have to keep on pedaling. Now, around mile marker 350, you're going to come to the Sunken Trace, which is really cool, um, but not as good as the one down south. Just keep pedaling because at mile marker 341, murder. Mm -hmm. I'm a sucker for a state line sign picture. So every time I can get one, I'm going to do it. And it's especially exciting to do it on a bike. Hallelujah, I'm out of Tennessee. <laughs> There's the buzzards. They're waiting for me to fall out. <laughs> oh, look how pretty. You actually cross the Tennessee River in Alabama, so it will throw you off a little bit. At times, you just need to sit back and admire the view. Once you get on the bridge, it's only about a mile and a half or so before you get to Colbert Ferry, which was our destination because they have a bike-only campground. Now, finding this bike-only campground is pretty tricky because it's not marked. You have to know where it is and Thank goodness for another bike packer who told us exactly how to get to it. Because I don't know if we would have found it. But he said, make sure you just go straight and pass the dumpster and then look off to the right. And we were like, oh, mm -hmm. but it's yep. super hard. So we were the only ones camping here, which is actually pretty cool. But then again, kind of scary. Because what if something gets after us? I have to be able to outrun Rodney. And if he makes it to his bicycle, I'm up the creek. We rode 65 miles that day, so I slept like a baby that night. So look, I'm working on the next video. Hit the subscribe button though, so I can get 100 subscribers and have my own channel name. <laughs>